Welcome to the XSF Podcast, hosted by Devante and Lou. This is the Way podcast to, to show that every human is capable of being extreme. Tune in to discover how you are too. All right, everybody. Welcome to another amazing episode of the XSF podcast. You got me, your host, Devante. And today we had our very first in-person podcast interview. And I'm so, 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 so excited because the homie that we had on is not only the owner of a skateboard company, Dream Big, he's also the founder of 10K Distribution, the sickest, most rad skate distribution that's going to be out there. Just watch. We're on the come up. And we're so happy to announce that we have partnered with 10K Distribution. So everybody underneath that umbrella, like Pillar Skateboards, Monte Coso Skateboards, shout out to our sponsor, and now Extreme Strength and Fitness and many more. Make sure you check them out on Instagram. You can check everything down in the show notes and make sure you, you definitely listen in because this 22-year-old Vontez Hill has some knowledge to spit. All right, everybody, before we get to the show, I'm going to give a shout-out to our sponsors. You already know. Shout-out to Third Lair, Skate Park, and Skate Shop. Those are the homies. Ben, the homies, and I love you guys. Appreciate the support. Monte Kelso Skateboards, keep getting it. Keep doing what you're doing and keep supporting the skate game because you know we love to see what you're doing on a daily basis. And last, but very much so not least, Batch Roasting Co. Thank you for fueling my 3.30 a.m crazy rampage filled workouts now i'm playing it doesn't get me to that point but it gets me feeling absolutely amazing for my days every single day so thank you batch roasting co you can check out all these amazing companies and humans down below in our show notes and make sure if you haven't already a do us a favor hit that hit the little follow button uh if you're on apple podcast download the episode leave a review whatever you can do if you're jiving with what we say here then Show, show a little bit of support. Help us get out there to more people so we can get this message out there to people. And I want to let you know we have something special coming January 1st, 2022. A new website will be coming. So be on the lookout. Everything is going smooth as butter as of right now. So, you know, all things go. Things happen. But everything is on schedule to launch January 1st. I'm not going to go into detail what we have coming out quite yet. But just know we have a whole overhaul coming me and Lou sat down at a big business meeting where we actually went over, kind of rebranded a couple of things and dove into what we're going to be providing. So stay tuned for that. And always remember, hey, we got some coaching slots available. So come on in, hit that link below. Coaching slots available now. You can book your consultation today. All right, everybody. Much love and thank you to everybody who supported us up till now. And I hope you enjoy today's episode. Ever since I was younger, I I guess you didn't look at it when you're younger, like, oh, I have to be a part of this thing. But Mm -hmm. I realized when I look back, like, when I was young, the happiest times were always when I was just, like, with the homies, I was a part of something. I had something I was working toward, whatever the case may be. Like, that's when I always felt the best. And I know, like, when COVID hit, right, and, like, the gym shut down at Hamlin, I lost my job there and stuff. It was kind of, like, almost that same thing because I was, like, in this awesome community of people, you know, I was like, what I was doing was the skaters, all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're all by ourselves. And I was like, dang, yeah, this is definitely. just totally different. So it's interesting you said that. Um, but yeah, for me, another thing is like, I get like that a lot, honestly. Mm-hmm. And I have to like take breaks sometimes yep. to like get my mind right. Mm-hmm. And like what I do is like, I'm big into like meditation and stuff like that. That's and great. like just keeping my mind on the right track. And do like, you use meditation to clear your mind or you do you use it to uh, like almost organize your thoughts? I would say sometimes it's to clear it mm-hmm. and sometimes it's organized. Depends thoughts. on the day. Yeah. yeah. Like every day I wake up, I turn on like, like I have uh, preset YouTube videos mm-hmm. that like, med- like a, uh, what's it called? A meditation uh, follow. Oh follow yeah. Like follow along. Yeah. Like thing, just yeah. go with them and then yep. I just do that every morning yep. to like start my day and get ready. Yeah. But uh, yes, and I'm I'm a very like organized type of dude. Mm-hmm. Like I write everything down. Yeah, I keep track of everything. All the notes and, and yes, I have so many posted notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And like I 
just got to stay organized because, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to be, you know, owning a brand, you got you to gotta stay You organized. have to. I mean, I'm the same. I think that's why I use meditation, you know, is yeah. to organize my thoughts more often because I find it like, I like the clearing my head when I have just so much going on. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, I, for me, at least I, I get better benefit of just organizing those thoughts instead of like trying to clear them away because then it's like, yeah. they're still there. Like yeah, they're going to come back. Fact, it's going to come back. Like, so just, to, yeah, I love that you said it depends on the day. Um, but we were talking before, we, you know, we hopped on here and I want you to tell everybody kind of where, first I want to know, how did you get into skating? Like, how did that all come about for you? Like, that's where we're going to start. Okay. Um, well, for me, I was about eight, seven, eight years old. Mm-hmm. I remember just playing Tony Hawk's Underground Project 8 every day on my PlayStation 2. And, like, I would always be infatuated, like, oh, this is really cool. How do they do these tricks? And how do they, like, impossible kickflip, flip, flip, what are those things? And I would just, like, grab my Target brand board that my mom got me at the time. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a real board. I didn't know this at the time because I was just eight years old. Yeah. But I would just go outside at, like, my front porch or whatever and, like, just practice tricks day in and day out. And once I realized that it was much more difficult than in the video game to do them. <laughs> yep. Because I was, like, really good at the game, and then I would yeah. go outside and be like, oh, my God. Yeah, the X, the X and square, dude. Yeah, X and square and like all the, day. The fucking, oh, my God. Analog <laughs> Triangle sticks. to grind, I think, is what it was. Yeah, really. like, Tony Hawk games were much, like, I play Skate 3 now, but Tony Hawk games doing tricks in them are much different than that. Oh, yeah. And it's like, so I would just go outside and be like, oh, this is much harder, and that just gave me the drive to mm-hmm. want to learn more yep. and more. So I just went from there, and I fell in love with it ever since. That's so stopped. cool. That's so cool. Um, so do you like skate because of like the flick of the thumbstick then? How it yeah, almost analog. Rep- yeah, the yeah. analog. And it, it makes it more yes. representative of skateboarding and it's, stuff. It actually feels like you're... I wonder that. Too. You know, like kids who like maybe grew up playing skate, mm-hmm. like besides, like, we grew up with Tony Hawk, right? Yeah, but like, yeah. what about the kids who grew up playing skate? I wonder if they got on a board and it like made more sense. Like Probably. a tray flip goes you like this with your feet movement. you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah with your fingers and it just lines up i feel because there's times where like i've low-key like got better at the scoop of a switch tray flip because of skate because i was like yeah. okay it's here it's here and then i'll be like wait okay cool it exactly, kind of works to say exactly set. so it's kind of and it, it's like funny. i wanted to start playing um i wanted to start playing what was it skater, skater XL. XL. i yeah. wanted to start playing that but then I saw how like the controls and everything are. Yeah, I was not. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is too much. I don't understand why they made it like this. They yep. could have just did it, but like the skate three way or the skate. Just make like a super hard version where it's like that's a thing you can do in the game. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the only appeal to me with Skater XL really was like real spots. The, yeah, like, that was that was the cool. actual spots. Yeah, that, that was like, like they did that kind of in Skate Three, but it was just like they were named replicas different and, like, and replicas. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they actually have like legit spots. Well, it's tight. Oh. So, eight years old, seven, seven or eight, playing Tony Hawk, mm-hmm. went outside, started skating. Now, I think it's interesting that, you know, you said it was hard, right? You realized it was a lot harder than you thought it was going to be. Yes, way more difficult. I love that you stayed with it, though. Like, that's just the thing about skateboarding that I, I love because it's like everybody who skated for a little chunk of time, like, you know that stuff is hard and you know how to kind of get through that hard work. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you notice that kind of transfer over into the rest of your life or were you already kind of like that? And then it transferred over into your skateboarding. You think I was already like that. Yeah. Cause like growing up, you know, my parents were like always instilling it into my mind that mm-hmm. like you never, you never just give up right away. Like mm-hmm. you always gotta see it through to the end yep. or like, just don't give up so easily. You know what I mean? So I just like took that and then skateboarding was like, oh, this is a new challenge. I got to remember, like, you can't just give up easily. You got to see it through and, you know, land my tricks and stuff like that. So like, it really gave me the motivation to just keep going with it. And a lot of people at that time that were my age, like Mm -hmm. in elementary school, were like really wishy-washy with what they like to do. And I was never like that. I was like, okay, once I found skating, this is it. Like, mm-hmm. No more. Because I, I used to be really big in like basketball, baseball, stuff like that. Yeah, sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like traditional sports. And then yeah. I was like, okay, 
you don't have to have a coach yelling at you to do this or like you don't have to go to practice to do this like, I feel like that's such a common thing in skating because that's how it was for me too like i i was just like that kid who was just drawn to like the athletic side of things like i just needed to move do things so like you said yeah. playing sports growing up right that's kind of just what right. you did mm-hmm. then skateboarding came along it was the same thing i was like dude i can do this and just do what i want cool like, it's, it's like it's more that. fun than the rest of these things too like, yeah like i don't know i think me and lou always got every like anybody who's on our cast like they don't skate we're like we ask them have you ever skated no why they tell us like some whatever reason yeah like, no we're getting you on a board because it's like yeah you know, like once what? just once you get on a board and you just like give it a little bit of time it, it's just this feeling that i feel like everybody could get benefit from like it just yeah, in some way exactly. whether you're just pushing around to get from point a to point b or you're Screws loving up. it so much mm-hmm. that you start learning tricks i think everybody can get a lot of value out of it you know for me from like a coach standpoint or a trainer standpoint i even think of just what it does for the the muscles of the lower body and the rest yeah. of the body you know just you want to get a good workout and screw running you hop on a skateboard and go push around push exactly. learn how to push regular and switch like you'll feel it for stuff. sure yeah you're exactly. gonna feel those muscles yeah getting stronger i love, and, love how you got in skating it's and cool. it's like yeah and like i my whole thing is like at one point or another i think that everybody has skated yes somehow like been around a skateboard at least like, yeah like some some the culture brought... has influenced so much mm-hmm. like, everybody's either been around a skater well, at least or, our like, age like in younger like right yeah. like in i'm sure a little bit older even like i know maybe not like when my mom was younger mm-hmm. like she probably wasn't around a skateboard no she was though like she had that one kid in the neighborhood who skated and stuff yeah, so it's yeah. like, there's always that one guy yeah that goes to your school that's in your neighborhood wherever it may be as less like a skater and it was for me too like i was gonna ask you so not to cut you off but you're kind of going into like my, the next question i was gonna ask uh was when you were skating that young mm-hmm. the school you went to was there other skaters did you have other people like skating with you or was it just kind of you doing your thing until you found like other skaters from going to parks um honestly i'd say not elementary school yeah but it wasn't until middle school mm-hmm. that i like there was a whole bunch of us oh, that skated. Okay. Like, because where'd you go to school? Oh, I went to um, I went to Meadowbrook Elementary School in Golden Valley. Okay, so you went. Okay. Yeah, yep. and then I went to um, Northdale Middle School in Blaine. Okay. Yep. So, Blaine. Uh, it was interesting for sure. Uh, but like middle school, there was a whole bunch of us that skated. It was a whole crew, and then there's like we'd all meet up at Sand Creek Skate Park mm-hmm. in Coon Rapids, and we'd all just like. That's where we would learn tricks and like mess around. Is that the one like this? The the snake run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the new. That's the new part. That's right by my job, dude. I'm gonna have to go there. Oh wow, yeah, I, yeah. I don't like what they did with that part at first. Okay, yeah, I've never skated it. Before. The old Sand Creek was like way better than the new part. Was it? Yeah, that's the one that we would skate. Okay, and, like it would. It had a mini ramp, a whole mini ramp, and like it liked the new one, but like it was like way bigger. Oh, one. so it was like like longer or just like taller? Uh longer yeah okay so more space yeah Yeah. and then like it wasn't all compact there was parts everywhere okay like you could actually like do lines is that how the park is now it's just like compact really just really tight you can barely do anything Mm. and that's like a real problem i don't i don't go there as much anymore yeah you know just because i've moved away and like i want to see new things yeah of course you know that i don't know why they did that with that park Mm -hmm. but you know it's whatever it's their city, I guess. So, so growing up, it was more like at the skate park then, mm-hmm. where you met people. Yeah, were those people that you just ended up skating with the rest of the time? So you said middle school, there was a group of you who skated, right? Yep. So like you guys, a lot of us, all went to the skate park and stuff. Mom, mm-hmm. dad, I, that's kind of how it was for me too. Now, when you got into like high school, did that change a little bit, or did those kids like go with you as well to the same high school? Um, how did how did it go from there? Honestly, a lot of kids. Okay, so Northdale was in between Coon Rapids and Blaine. Yep. So a lot of kids had a choice of like what high school they could go to, and the kids that went to more of like Coon Rapids mm-hmm. than Blaine stopped skating. Oh, okay. For some whatever reason. Whatever reason, reason yeah. And that like I just saw that and was like, wow, it's okay. I'm gonna you know they're doing them. Obviously, it's their life. Yeah. But I I had to you know it was so like I love skateboarding so much I yeah. kept on doing it yeah. no matter what and uh. The people that the homies that I went to Blaine with, we all kept doing what we were doing. Like mm-hmm. we kept skating, and uh, what we would do is like my my friend Matt. I still follow him on Instagram. We haven't talked in so long, but I I need to catch up with him. 
I used to go over his house every day after school, and mm-hmm. we would skate his um flat bars and like his like little ramps and stuff. And Dude, those were the built. best sessions, though. Yeah, like we would do everything. It was the funnest time in my life, honestly. Yeah, those were the best set, like hands down. Like I remember those days, like mobbing down the street to yeah. the homie's house with a flat bar and just like, skating yeah, every three, four, school. five hours in the driveway, just laughing, drinking on some, yep. some Mountain Dew, and just having a good old time. <laughs> yeah, and there's like old videos of me on YouTube. Is there with really? them. that? I so, have I have a couple up there too, and we'll put some so links funny. in the bio. We'll put some links in the show notes. <laughs> Gotta here. show them. Yeah, <laughs> that's tight. Gotta show them the Grom days. That's so cool. But like, yeah, so. Uh, and it's it's cool because now those dudes support my brand. Yeah, and yeah, and I want to get into that. Um, so skating through high school, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. When did you? When did you decide? Because you're 22, right? Yes. Okay, so 22, multiple business founder mm-hmm. and owner. <laughs> yeah. How did you decide to start the, was it the, the skateboard company that came first and then the distro or was the distro an idea and then the board company and we'll give people more insight too, if they don't know like what the, what the distribution is and what the skate company is too. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was the board company first. Yeah. Okay. Because me and my friend came up with the idea. I was 15, 14. And Did he it really was like, start that? Wow. Yeah, like we came up with the idea in his um old house in South Minneapolis. And like uh we just like was like, okay, we were watching skate videos and we were like, Oh, we could do this. We could start a board company, why not? Yeah. Like, and then we just start coming up with ideas. We obviously didn't know like how we were gonna do all everything, obviously, because we're That's... kids, but we God. had the idea and came up with the name in the same day and it uh-huh. was just it just went from there. We started drawing designs, like clothing and stuff like that. Yeah. Like boards, graphics and stuff like that. That's just cool because I feel like most kids at that age, like, I know me, I was like, I'm going to be pro. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be right here with my man Tanner. I'm going to be pro, you know? Yeah, like, I felt like that for so long, too. I wanted to be pro. Yeah. But then I was like, mm, I could start my own thing and turn exactly. my friends pro. Yeah. You know? So I just yeah. went, went that route. And it's been working pretty well. And then I came up with the distribution idea, mm-hmm. I'd say late 2020. It's been okay. pretty recent. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was just because uh, through Dream Big, I met so many p- other business owners, like skate company owners, mm-hmm. like Corey and uh, like um, Jacob runs APM mm-hmm. and Minor, mm-hmm. everybody like that. And I was shout just out like, to the homies. Yeah, shout out to them. You guys are the best. Shout out to you. the homies. Uh, and like, so I was like, okay, we could we would be better as a unit. Yeah, honestly, course, because the Minnesota skate scene is like, it's, you know, it's kind of there, but it's not really there. And that's something I've noticed, too. I yeah. think me and you talked about that, uh, me, you, and Lou, when we were yeah, talking yeah. at our meeting and stuff that one time. You know, I was saying, you know, it's interesting because there's so much talent. Yeah, here. there is. There's so much. So much talent. That, and there's also, like, just so many people who are just down for the skate scene. Yeah, exactly. But there just wasn't. It goes unseen. Yeah, it's just unseen. Exactly. Uh, that's, that's that's the perfect way to say it. Like, unless you're a Tanner, unless you're a Jack, yeah. unless you're you know Jonathan, you know all these all these Henry, dudes, Henry, Henry, yeah. Henry R.I.P. and our mans. You know it. There's so many people like that. A lot. Just is, and it's not even the fact of like maybe those people aren't even trying to be pro, but there's like you said these other company owners, mm-hmm. business owners who are trying to just give back to the skate community and yep. create this thing that the Midwest doesn't have. Just, yeah, exactly. So, oh, dude, you get me hyped up when I'm talking to you. It's just so cool how you came up with that. And it was like, let's do it. Like, why Why does Cali, why does East and West Coast have to have the distros yeah, exactly. and stuff? Like, let's, let's get something popping here. Like, because, like, it's anything is possible, literally. And mm-hmm. I say that all the time. And it's like, you know, nowadays with this new age generations, like, you can do it from anywhere like i said to you and lou mm-hmm. you can do it from anywhere you want mm-hmm. you don't have to be a certain place like you did 20 years ago exactly. 10 years ago yep. and it's like that makes me super stoked too because like through figuring out all these different avenues like of how we're gonna do this and start the distro and mm-hmm. everything it's like i as me as a, a person like personally i um i'm a sponge i like i love learning new things yes like yep. I, I when i learn something new it gets me hype. Yep. Yep. So through like hype. learning all of this, it's been like really fun. Mm-hmm. Honestly, mm-hmm. like I'm. Do you get excited. um? Do you like hard work? Sounds like you like hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I love it. That's a great thing. I don't know if you. Um, I love the journey. Yeah, I don't know if you know who, uh, Andrew Huberman is. 
the neuroscientist. He did a thing with uh, I think so. ah, geez, who I can't remember who he did it with. It was on Jankum, I believe mm-hmm. is what it is. Okay, um, yeah, the magazine. Yeah, yeah, he did something with Jankum. Uh, I can't remember who he did it with right at the moment, but you know, he was talking about dopamine and that one and stuff, mm-hmm. and how you know a lot of people nowadays are you know fix uh, fixated on these like short hits of dopamine so like instagram likes you know yeah. followers stuff like that all that mm-hmm. um but what i find interesting is you're talking about the hard work and it sounds like you're definitely getting those dopamine hits every yeah. time you're learning something uh new every time you you know accomplishing the goal that's going to get you to the next goal you yeah. know it's very interesting to talk to people with that mindset because it shows. It shows what yeah. you do. I mean, look what you said. Fifteen, fifteen. Mm-hmm. You guys are like, hey, let's do this. Why not? Let's <laughs> do it. Little kids watching skate videos. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why yeah, right, don't we so, just start our own thing? That's so cool, though. Yeah. So, with that in the distro, mm-hmm. let's uh, let's let everybody know uh, who's all who's all in the distro. Right okay. Now. What's what's the so let them know what the distro name. And the company's in the distro. So let's go over that. Okay. So it's 10K distribution. Shout out. 10K for 10,000 lakes, Minnesota. Um, it's Pillar, APM, My Own Dream Big. Um, it's XSF and Monacoso so far. Let's go. And right now, we're just like in our first starting, like, you know, first stages, obviously. We're and all we're, just partnering up right now. It's yeah, like facts. the very beginning of stuff, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like, so what it's going to be pretty much is like a whole bunch of Minnesota skateboard companies coming together to just like expand in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. We just want to expand our reach to other parts of the globe and the country, and all yes. types of things like that. So it's not like, oh, this is just like, you know, being the local homie brand is cool and everything, mm-hmm. but we... At you know, 10k, what's well, 10k? I the want, local homie brands, yeah. Like, like I want it to be, you know, something much yes, bigger than that, yeah. And that's something that you know, you caught me with when we sat down and had a conversation. Was you were talking about just, just bringing light to the people out here and yeah. that are just you know, really trying to just give back to the communities that they're a part of, and yeah, exactly. Uh, that I think is going to be the coolest part about all of this is like everybody that is a part of this is really giving back. I mean, Pillar, Coso, everybody, everybody yeah. that's doing stuff is always giving back. And it's just cool that you decided to go that route. Cause I know that's something that me and Lou talked about when we started XSF was like, mm-hmm. or when I, I started XSF when we parted up, I was like, you know what? Something I got to make sure we like lay down is the fact that like, I don't want to gun for these like big sponsorships and stuff. Yeah. Like if it happens down the road, cause we get to that point. Cool. But I would rather just build with people who are building right now. And yeah, exactly. I think that's kind of like why we ended up coming together eventually. Like, it's just cool how that is why I love social media. And for that reason is like the connections that we can make. Like you were that's, saying, you've yeah. probably met quite a bit of business people through there and then met up with them in person. So and, many people. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what, God, it's just so, Keep going back to just like how young you are and how you've gotten to where you are in starting a distro, starting a skate company. Uh, yeah. You know, you have you have a pro or two on your team too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You I have a couple pros. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so what's your what's your advice to you know maybe that 14, 15 year old maybe listening, or even that thirty year old maybe listening that yeah. has wanted to get those ideas out of their head and create something with them? Like what? What do you think has been the, the the light in the dark for you when it's come to that, getting those thoughts out and making them happen? What would be your boost tip? Honestly, the best advice I could give to anybody that wants to start a board company, clothing line, mm-hmm. whatever it may be, just go for it. Like, if you have an idea in your mind, mm-hmm. you know, just do as much research as you can. Yep. Get your, like, whoever you want, a couple friends together to help you out and just execute it because at the end of the day like it's your life you know people are always trying to say like oh well this and that it might not work this and like you know try to bring you down you know because that that happened to me so much when i was first starting dream big Mm -hmm. and i just was like dude i'm gonna do this no matter what because it's something i'm passionate about okay on that real quick was it people that were close to you 
yeah, it was like family members right? sometimes. Yeah, and like, I know what you're saying, dude. Like I would, I told some of my teachers at my high school, like mm-hmm. I wanted to do this, and they were like, eh, well, you might want to just do go, go to college to, and do this. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm in community college right now, but like, but look what you're doing though. It's yeah. different than like just like following this like mundane system that's out there. I don't want to get a tangent about that, but that bumps me out. I'm not trying to do that. that. <laughs> I, I just want to, you know, follow my dreams and do what i'm passionate about so that'd be your biggest tip is like just just do it now how did you get yourself to just do it is it just because i think it's different for everybody i mean it sounds like you're just the type of dude who is able to just i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do it you know and Mm -hmm. it's kind of how i I found myself but there's also times where like i'll have these ideas and if i'm not mindful enough about those ideas like i let them kind of pass like i I know we were talking about taking notes earlier and stuff Mm -hmm. like that i know that's kind of one big thing that's helped me make stuff happen is, you know, once you, once you write it down, like you can think stuff all day, but like once you write it down on a piece of paper yeah. and you look at it, journaling, yes, it's a different, it just creates this different thing. And then you talk it, like, mm-hmm. right. Then you speak it. Yeah. Speak it into and, existence. Yeah. And that's something we talked about. And I think that's, that's very interesting. Cause I feel like you probably just did everything simultaneously without even thinking about it. It was just mm-hmm. like, you watch a skate video, we we'll probably still start a skate company. Turn to the homie. No, let's start a skate company, dog. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, cool. And I just like kept going, you know. Yeah, and there was no there. no second thought of like, oh, what if this doesn't work? What if blah, blah, blah. like, yeah. and that's just I don't know. That's very powerful to have, and because there's, I'm sure there has to be even like bigger companies out there, you know, who have, you know, people who run the stuff behind the scenes that we don't see, and they yeah. might be. I mean, they have teams that are helping them kind of come up with these ideas and yeah. stuff. It makes me wonder, like, with the bigger companies and all that stuff, like, who really is the company? You know what I'm saying? Like, is yeah, it the people in the, like, in, in, the, in the works, like, creating the ideas and bringing those ideas that they just had in their head to the person? Like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's a good one. And it's just like, you're out here doing that for yourself. So it's just, it's really cool, dude. Yeah, like I, I'm, like I said, I'm a real, like, sponge. Like, mm-hmm. I'm learn, learning with learning. I love learning. I'm really passionate about that, too. Um, seeing all of those things like with the bigger companies and everything, I was like, "Oh, so this is how that's done," or "Oh, so this is how they did that. Mm-hmm. This is how they got all these people to they got just they just got all these people together and just like created something amazing." Yes, and then that's pretty much what I'm trying to do with 10K too. Mm-hmm. So like, I saw them do that, and now I'm trying to bring it here. That's so sick. You know, our turn now. That's so sick. So sick. I'm telling y'all, this is. And go follow everything. Everything will be down in the show notes. You know, if, uh, if you're not watching, go check it out on YouTube because this is the first in-person XSF interview. So know. pretty excited about that. So if you aren't watching, go check it out. He's actually sitting here with me in the studio. Um, Super hype. Yeah. I, it's just, I I just love how me and you just literally said this when you had the meeting too, is like mm-hmm. the fact that life there's these moments in life where like things happen yeah. and like you have a decision to make in that moment of like going with it or not going with it. And it yeah, exactly. shows time and time again, when people come into my life and I just have this gut feeling of like, mm-hmm. sure, this is a good idea. Let's do it. Like, yeah. I, 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 I like this. Let's do it. It, it doesn't, it doesn't steer me wrong. I mean, now like I have my wonderful business partner, Lou, who's an absolute psycho and will do anything for me. Like yeah, he's, he's right. absolutely he's amazing. Dude. Uh, now I'm part of, we're part of 10 K with yep. you and everybody yep. else. And you know, what if, I don't know, it's just crazy to me. Cause I, I don't know why I do this, but I think of what ifs all the time. Cause that's just interesting to like, yeah. when I think back, I'm like, I'm really happy of where I am. It's more so those days where it's like, life might be kind of just getting me down to have a long day at work. Like yeah. this last week worked 16 hour days, drove over a thousand miles that week. Didn't see my kids mm-hmm. three of the days out of the four I worked, you know? So it was just like one of those weeks and. At the end of the day, I always tell myself, like, man, I'm so happy to be living the life I'm living. You know, I've met these people. And Gratitude. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm so thankful that I don't know what it is. I honestly, couldn't pinpoint it myself. Maybe you can. But, like, what it is that just makes me say yes to a like, good feeling, right? Because yeah. it's like, I know I used to fight that a lot when I was younger, I feel like. Like, when I was younger, I, you know, ran in the streets, did a bunch of other stuff. And it's like. I was always fighting my gut feeling of like, hey, I should go do this because I want to do this. Like, it probably yeah. is going to be best for me. I want to hang out with these people. It's probably best for me. But uh, wondering if you have that same feeling, like when you kind of meet those people, like when you came together with people in 10K, like mm-hmm. you just know 
when you met them, like, yeah, it's going to be good. Like once you sat down and talked, like, do you have yeah. that same kind of feeling? Yeah. It's like whenever I'm with the people that I'm, you know, partnering up with and mm -hmm. starting the distribution with, whenever I would like talk to them or speak to them about future plans or like anything that we wanted to do with the distribution, yep. like I would get this feeling in my spine. Really? Like I literally just got a couple seconds ago, like this, like little jolt of, like, Dude, it's so weird you say, it. And bro. Like, that is so weird because ever since I've been young, I get I've told my mom I have a sixth sense, and it's like if I felt like something bad was gonna happen, you would know. I would get this weird bzzz, yeah, like down like, my whole spine, and then nothing you. bad would happen. Like it, yeah. it, was, it was more like a everything's okay feeling, mm -hmm. or this is gonna be a good thing. Like that, I, that's cool. Well, Sorry, I keep yeah, going. That's, that's cool. I've never heard anybody else talk about that. Yeah, because like I don't, I never knew what it was when I was like really young mm -hmm. but like as i got older i realized like everything good that's happened to me it you know i would feel it beforehand and then i would just go with it and unknowingly it's led me to really amazing spaces and like meeting the really amazing people yeah. and it's like you know you know with starting dream big and everything with that it was like okay I got the really amazing feeling when I was a teenager mm -hmm. and now it's coming back and like full circle. Yeah. And then it's like, I meet even more people through it and I do, you know, all these events and mm -hmm. like product tosses, giving away stuff, uh, you know, people supporting and like doing podcasts and yeah. like, um, meeting people that I've always wanted to meet like Imrod mm -hmm. over at third yeah. or like, Steve over at Familia yeah, right. or like Kirian or all those dudes yeah. over there, like meeting all those guys, people that I've looked up to for years. And shout out real quick. Yeah. Shout out to third there. Shout, shout out, out to Familia, guys. you know, Cal surf. Get all love all you guys so much. You've been yeah, a big you know. part of all of our lives here in the Midwest skate scene. So thank you to everybody. You do the best. You do so real. much for so many people. Yeah. And no, it's like, that's so cool. yeah, like growing up skating third, mm -hmm. like the lock-ins that they would do. Well, like with my you know what? You know what I think about, bro. We definitely skated together back in the day, most but like likely. didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause yeah, like, okay, likely, how how old are you when you started skating third and doing like lockdowns? I was probably like nine or ten. I'm telling you, we were there at some point together. Yeah, I started skating third nine, ten. I'm two years older than you, so yeah, I was definitely still doing lock. Like I did every, mm. actually. That was probably when I was doing every lockdown because it was like. And Me. then there's like the Taco Bell next door that yeah, we would bro. all go to when we got hungry. Yeah, it was like B, Tanner, just the whole crew. Everybody was just always yeah. there, dude. And it's like the yeah. best times. Oh god, the best bro. times. That hey, that is a fun time. Like really if is. you I they haven't had one for a long time, and I who knows if they're gonna bring it back, but there is something so cool about being a little 12, 13-year-old yeah. and getting to go to a skate, skate park, park at 9 o'clock like, at night and staying there till 6 in the morning. Yeah, like, dude, that's the best thing ever. so fun. Like, I'm surprised. Like, I was surprised at the time. Like, I'm 9 and 10. Like, I didn't know my mom was going to be down, like, cool yeah. with it. Like, yeah. when she was super down. She was like, yeah, go have fun with your friends. I'm like, cool. I'm about like, to go do it. Then. Yeah, it's like, dude, they had the, con like, the, con the bowl hanging. Like, yeah. The, the con I remember, like, I think I won my first like contest mm -hmm. at at one of those things. It was like a flat bar contest and stuff. And then, okay, tight. dude, and then I got see some. Oh, yeah. I saw probably some of the worst injuries. Oh, at some of those sure. twisted ankles. Dude, I, one of the lock ins that I went to, I was trying to skate this ledge, like this box ledge thing that was, was it, at third. Was it when they had the A frame? I think so. Yeah. 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 Like I don't know why there was like okay, it was it was with BMXers too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, yep. I was trying to skate this thing. I was trying to crook it. I kept getting in, like locked in, yeah. and I was just trying to get out of it, pop out. Yeah. And, like I, got, I was so close one time. And then this, like this kid, this this BMXer kid, just comes up and like hits me with his pegs or like his like front in it. Dude, I got so messed up that <laughs> night because of the BMXers would just get in my way. Oh and, like, not god, dude. Like that. that. Hey, if you're a BMXer or a scooter, you're listening. It's not that I don't want you there. It's just, just be mindful. Out. Be dude. mindful, please. Like just. just you got you have bigger things than us whipping around bikes and scooters. Oh, we got a little board. Exactly. Like, like we're just gonna here. really hurt somebody if you're not paying attention. Just be careful. Be aware. <laughs> be aware. It's a little Jeez. tangent, but for real. I've been hit by I know I know how you feel because I've been yeah. hit by bikers too, but it really hurts. Nah, but back I just love that you got to the, 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 the all nighter thing because I haven't thought about all nighters like in so long. Like it's yeah. been it's been years, been years since I've thought about that. 
And then it was so dope when, you know, Familia opened their skate park and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we were able to start venturing there because then yeah. you're able to go from there into downtown and go skate around downtown. Yeah, exactly. How, uh, out there, no evil twins. speaking of like street skating and stuff, um, is there any, is there like a, a YouTube channel for like yours, like dream big? Is there anything that like I could put in the, the show notes for people? You could. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. There's a dream big YouTube channel. Okay, um, cool. Actually, there's a link tree. You know, link tree like the, the yep yeah the site um 10k is distributions link tree okay I'll just the, put that right in the show yeah the dream big YouTube channel all of our YouTube channels are on there sick actually. perfect so, perfect I'll just put that in there then you could just keep that and then um I was gonna say that like with street skating honestly I have to say this I like street skating better than parks oh yes oh uh, it's it's just freeing dude it's just because you're I get you're not to, confined to the space. Yeah, exactly. I get to just, get way more gnarly at the street spots. Yeah, than, like not that, not that like you can. That's what I love about skateboarding is it's so creative and it's like such mm-hmm. an like independent and individual thing. But I do feel like the most creative part of skateboarding can come out in the streets, right? So yeah, it's like you exactly. get hella creative in a park. Don't get me wrong. I mean, look how mm-hmm. look how Tanner skates and stuff. Yeah, he's I mean, super gnarly. He, yeah, like you can get creative on a flat bar. You can get creative in a park and do wally to once and stuff or yeah, slap you know, things. all this stuff. Crazy but variations. when you're out in the just cruising, even like not even like trying to skate a street spot, like yeah, I love throwing my helmet on, just cruising down this high bridge here and going yeah. into St. Paul and just skating around, donking random little things, it's all over free. stuff. Yeah, and it's like it's, it's like the most fun. To me, like we were talking about earlier, the sport thing, you know, yeah. you, you found it. And it's like this thing, and I feel like that's where it comes out the most. It's like when you're yeah. just out there cruising, because like there's times where like I'll be pushed. It's always been my muse, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. growing up, and something might be going bad in the house, or like when my grandpa died. I remember like the first thing I did that next morning after I was done crying, I went to third and just skated, bro. Like Emrod yeah. gave me a hug and I walked in. All my friends gave me a hug. Threw my headphones in, skated for three hours. Just so straight, it's, dude. It was just, I was okay. After. Therapy. Therapeutic. Yeah. It's the most, like, whenever I would feel, like, whatever, depressed, anxious about mm-hmm. anything that was happening in my life, I would just go skate the streets and push around, and I would immediately feel better. Like, yes. I would just smile on my face while, like, the breeze is hitting me. Yes. And, dude. like, I would just feel better, and then, like, you know, just a couple pushes, power slide, kick flip, just immediately feel better after mm-hmm. that. So, it's, it's just it's something about it, man. I mean, like... And I've tried a lot of other things and I just haven't got it there. Like, mm-hmm. it's not the same. Like, I get it when I'm, like, training and stuff. But I think the reason why I get, I've get i gotten there with, like, training is because I know, like, it's playing a role in me being a father, you know, a better skater mm-hmm. and, like, all that stuff. But skating is just this – there's just this different thing about it. Like we are saying, like, everybody yeah, needs to get on a dang skateboard. Like, everybody just get on a board. To skate. <laughs> it's therapeutic. If your therapist hasn't recommended it to you yet, they should. They definitely yeah. should. Honestly – um, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, no. Not at all. The best. So let's go over. Uh, you know what? Here we're gonna pop. We're gonna pop this now. Well, we won't say too much, but we're talking about like skate parks and like you know, hopefully one day, which we will. We yeah. have something of our own. But uh, yeah. if you had a park and you could have anybody there with you, any pro, mm-hmm. uh, I guess not even pro. But just any skateboarder in general, dead or alive, who would be your three top picks? I gotta know. Oh man, I gotta know. Ugh, this is a heavy one. Okay, <laughs> let's see. You said dead or alive. Yeah, dead or alive. So oh, that's fine. Henry, rest in peace. Always went yes. to him. Yes. Um. Hmm. Who else would I choose? I would probably have to go with some of my favorite skaters. I want to meet Chris Pastras. Okay. He's founder of Stereo Skateboards, mm-hmm. legend. Um, and Jim Thebo. Okay. Jim Thebo. He okay. runs stuff over at Deluxe. At Deluxe, right? Yeah. I really want to meet him too because he does a lot of amazing things for a lot of people. Yeah. And like he's giving me a lot of advice. Like I email him sometimes or mm-hmm. hit him up on Twitter, or whatever. He's yeah. giving me a lot of good like advice and motivation throughout my life. That's sick. So yeah, I really want to meet those dudes. Probably more so for like the conversations you'd have yeah, than like, like the skate session, to, huh? Like, yeah. Yeah, just talk to them about everything. Yeah. Especially like like Chris. Yeah. Because he like founding stereo with Jason Lee. Yeah. Like, that's right. I huh? to, yeah, yep. I need to be able to talk to him. He's yeah. on like I have this list of people that I want to meet in the skate industry. 
in my lifetime. So I'm sure you already checked it off. Yeah, I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's gonna be, you know, I'm already I already know in my mind, like I'm mm-hmm. gonna meet these people. Oh yeah. You know, I gotta manifest that. But like Ah, yeah. dude, that's amazing. I love that you just said that. That's a big takeaway. Yeah. Listening, listen to what he just said, because you know, you, you just right there, you told yourself like I have this list of people I want to talk to, and I'm going to talk to them. Yeah. Exactly. Simple as that. Like, there's no them. timeline. Like, I'm not saying it's going to be tomorrow. I'm not saying it's going to be a year, but it's I will happen. talk to these people. Like, it will happen. Like, that's and that's I'm amazing. so hyped. And when it does, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask as many questions as I can, gain as much knowledge as possible. Yeah, because of the sponge, dude. And, like, yeah. just, you know, be super stoked, obviously. But it's like, you know, there's there's just so many people who have influenced me throughout the years and like had a big big impact on who i am who would you say is like the biggest impact on you my dad for sure your dad okay rest in peace to him oh um Um, so we don't mind going into that a little bit so was he was that more recent like for you like he's was he around when you were 14 15 still yeah he was yeah he passed when i was 16 okay sorry to hear that it's okay um you know it's it was heavy at first, like, because obviously that's my dad. Like, yes, I mean, that's, I'll tell you right now, like, my grandpa was my dad, so I know exactly yeah, how I was 16 when that happened. So. It's not like, it's like I'm still in high school, a teenager. Mm-hmm. So it's like, very hard time in your life for sure. Facts. And I, you know, there were so many more things that I wish I could have spoke to him about. Mm-hmm. And like, but he's a big influence for me because throughout my life, he like instilled in me, like, Montez, you're a king. Like, you, are like gonna do amazing things in life and he just like gave me the drive and like the 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 the, what's the word the confidence to like go for a certain like everything that i wanted yeah and like so he just like played such a big role in who i am and it's like to this day i whenever i'm like you know second guessing something or like maybe mm, i think about something he tells told me way back when and i'm like okay like my dad would have just been like, no, 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 just do, go for it. Like, yeah. Just do what you do. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's powerful, just, man. That's you know, very powerful, you know, because I can just, that's, that'll be with you the rest of your life. And, facts. you know, you and I'm going to tell my kids that one day. Yeah. I'm tell them like yeah. everything that my dad told me. Yeah, dude. That's, so. that's amazing because it's, it show. I mean, like I said, it shows in what you do daily. I mean, that's great Thank that you. you have that too. Uh, like I said, sorry that happened, but I'm glad he was a part of your life like that, you know, because that's how it was, you know, for me growing up, my mom was kind of the same way. Like she was like, you can do whatever you want to do. Like, just do it. Make sure you do it. Like, you know, whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve it. mm -hmm. Just got to stay focused. That's so cool, dude. That's so amazing. So Mm -hmm. dad is big, biggest influence. Now, when it comes to the skate industry, mm-hmm. when you're 14, 15, who was influencing you the most then? Like what like what videos, what companies were you watching that like got you hyped? Like I want to start my own company. I know you're saying like it was just the skating in general, like, oh, I could turn my friends pro, but yeah. you know, like what companies and stuff were you watching at that time? Um, parental advisory, BGK. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Stevie Williams was a big influence for me. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? It would be Johnny Schiller, okay, Element founder. Um, yep, I would watch like he had the 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 stories of like how he founded Element on his, on the Element YouTube channel. Oh, okay. And like I would watch those like religiously. Yeah. Because like he would like explain how he came up with the logo and like all these people would interview like all the ex pros and like the people who he worked with, and it was just and this so... was before like you said you're gonna start Dream Big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're already kind of okay. Mm-hmm. All yeah, right, I was already like. Wow, pick it up on that stuff yeah yeah this is amazing how these guys do these things like that maybe i could become a part of this yeah I mean, you know i still watch it to this day those those videos oh, totally. yeah and, I, I was gonna say i mean i feel like that's a very beneficial thing to watch mm-hmm. especially if you're for space sure. you're in, like it makes yeah, sense yeah yeah like it just whatever what it, it, i feel like every time i watch it i learn something new mm-hmm. so it's like mm-hmm. you know very beneficial and um, like I said, Jim Thibo, mm-hmm. he is like really amazing dude over at Deluxe. And uh has he been pretty influential on you since then too? Like have you been or did that come a little bit I'd later? I'd say I was about eighteen, eighteen, okay. seventeen, eighteen. Okay, cool. So when, a couple like, years into it kind of Yeah. Yeah. A couple years into it when I learned about who he was and what he does. Mm-hmm. And then 
I spoke to Nate Alton a couple times. Oh, okay. Yeah, the TM over at Deluxe. Yeah, the, yep. When I was in high school, because I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to get on. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay, how do I do this? He just laid it out for me. Like, mm-hmm. this is what you do. You send this watch me tape, mm-hmm. and like very little to none music, all mm-hmm. this whatever it may be. And uh, but you know, that's like, you know, I I had geared towards wanting to do my own thing for so long mm-hmm. that I was like, maybe this isn't what's best. For you, yeah. yeah, maybe this isn't the route I go mm-hmm. because everybody. I another thing I, I'm really like strict, like I strictly believe is that everybody has their own path and like, like that they need to follow. That's something I like to say too. Cause it's like, <clears throat> though I don't think we could all do what, like what, what we're doing, right? Where it's yeah. like some people literally their thought is like being that doctor, right? Mm-hmm. So okay, go yeah. to school, be that doctor. You know, we need that. You know, there's some people are. You know, they want to be financial advisors to make sure everybody's money's okay. Like, we need that, too. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. That's like, in the big that. times. Like, yeah. so it's just, I love that you brought that up because that's a good point to yeah. kind of make. Because it is, it is true. There's Everybody does have a different path in life. Um, but, you know, shoot, this one, this one sounds like it's probably one of the most fun. <laughs> yeah, and it's been working yeah. the way it's supposed to. Like, it's been, it's been working. This path that I've chosen to take has been going amazingly well for me now that just solidifies it would you say it's more the fact that you are making it go so well right so it's like Mm -hmm. think about this right you could have you could you can guarantee you it has not been peaches and rainbows the whole time Mm -hmm. i'm sure it has not been easy getting to where you're at right now not at all um but like you just said you love the process you you're here you're making it happen um do you think it was you more so like with the mindset behind it? Cause it's like, you know, you could have had those days or it was just done. That's the thing like Lou, Lou told me, uh, you know, a while back and I was just kind of down and out after Henry passed. And I was just, she closed the gym at third layer. Cause I just COVID, you know, mm-hmm. class were coming in and Henry thing. And I was just all over the place had my surgery. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I don't know what to do anymore. He's like, doesn't matter how long you need to take a break for to get yep. your mental right. This business will not stop unless you stop. Like, that's yeah, it exactly like, bottom line and i was like all right cool like i needed to hear that because it's true and it's like that drive alone like to have and i love what you're doing because like you're bringing together these people who are just like that mm-hmm. but now we can just do that together yeah and like makes you're talking 10 about times that, more yes the unity stronger. yeah the unity and stuff and just being this independent but also I'm not dependent, but I'm not, I don't just this uh, cohesion of humans trying to just be their best selves, yeah. and like through skateboarding. And I just, Thanks. I just think it's amazing, dude. I just love skateboarding is always coming around in, in my life and showing me like, Hey, like this is, this is where it's at. Like, yeah. let's just help people. Let's just have a good time, positive vibes. Like, there's not really much negativity going around in the skate game. We need to keep it that way. I think yeah. like it's a big, keep big it thing. Sure. So it's like, you'll see like random little things of like people trying to be like negative in it and stuff. And it just fades away real quick. Cause it's like, no one that's, we're just here to, it's that other part of life for us. Yep. And it's like, like, this is what we love to do. Like, this is what it's about. Yeah. I posted something on my story uh, quite recently, my Instagram story. Mm-hmm. That was like this, this dude just like in his car, like, if you call me, mm-hmm. you don't have any positive things to say. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, this is what I, I resonate with that because yeah. I'm not trying to hear any negativity, mm-hmm. like any naysayers. Whatever. Yeah, and that's the thing is like when I, I remember I got in a, a debate with somebody about this before. They're like, well, then how do you deal with negative stuff when it comes? It's like I I just accept that it's a part of life. Yeah, like I'm not gonna I'm. I'm not gonna invite it into my life, but I definitely accept that negative stuff happens. Yes, of course. Like there's always a balance. There's always a balance, of course. Like I totally accept that and I have mm-hmm. very much a lot of respect for that. Yeah. But don't bring that shit my way. I don't, there's no point yeah, to don't, like there's no point like to it, bring it my way. Like, facts. Like I try like dude, you don't even understand how how vividly and how much I just like purposely stay away from negative people. Yeah. Like I, I literally I protect my peace at mm-hmm. all times because that's the thing too is like i love having conversations with people who might have a who have a completely different thought process than me right like mm-hmm. 
we have maybe opposing views or whatever the case may be. And I love talking to people like that, but only if they're able to literally have a conversation and not argue about it and bring like a negative side of things. It's like, let me just hear your thoughts. Let me hear your way of processing these thoughts so I can get an understanding of it. And either I'm going to have a closer resemblance and my thought process to you, or I'm still going to be where I am. And cool. We talked about it. And it's like, I just think it's, uh, I'm I'm the same way. Like, it's like, Hey, I'm not going to search out for the negativity, but I am down to speak with people who might think differently. Like if you're out there and you think skateboarding isn't the coolest thing ever, come on, let's have a conversation because I could talk in Europe all day about it. But, uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just think it's, uh, it's very, very nice to hear that, you know, positivity thing just just because of the fact of like that's what 10k is going to be like, yeah. that's what i knew speaking with you is like this is going to be a amazing positive just everybody growing together type of place and yeah, i love exactly. that you brought that into it man I keep bringing it back there just because it's just so so amazing to me how you've gotten to to where you are so with skating with the business with everything that's going on, how do you, you know, you were talking about meditation and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you're meditating, when you're doing all these things, like, is that, that's an everyday thing you said, right? Like every yeah. single morning. Mm-hmm. So on the days when it feels crazy for you, I'm curious to hear like, what are your go-tos in the moment uh, to help you realize like, okay, this is just another bump in the road. Like, let's just keep it going. Like, what do you do for yourself in those moments? Um, I take a lot of like deep breaths in and out. Mm-hmm. I try to get my heart rate like where it needs to be because when I get really anxious, like my heart starts beating fast. Mm-hmm. So I lower my heart rate and then I just like tell myself like, okay, it, even though today might have been gnarly, mm-hmm. I might have had a bad day. It's not a bad life. Yes, like my life is gonna go on and better things can happen whenever, like oh. tomorrow in an hour. Yeah, like, whatever it may be. So I love that. And then like, I'll just tell myself like positive affirmations. Yeah. Like I'm, you know, I'm strong, mm-hmm. I'm resilient. I'm mm-hmm. like, like well-minded. I, you know, I'm doing all these amazing things. Um, you know, I can't do everything, but that's why I like. You're trying your best. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. Mm-hmm. And it's like. Dude, that, that right there, that's a superpower. You know, yeah. I think that's something I'm trying to instill into my son, mm-hmm. uh, my oldest right now. And, youngest as well is like hey like you i don't need to tell you you're a great kid yeah you need to be telling yourself you're a great kid like, exactly yeah that's and that's something i'm instilling in him right now is like hey like sit down with yourself and be like hey i tried my hardest like i'm trying my hardest i mm-hmm. did you know I, I did this i did that you know i can do this and so it's a big thing and did you ever have like a i can't do this mindset or did you have that more so like dang i can't do this right now but i'm gonna learn how to do it it was always that. Oh, was that? It was always like growth minded and yeah. Because yeah. I never told myself I can't do something. Yeah, that's that limits you. Yep. You I know? try to whenever I'm teaching skate camp, you know, and whenever I'm working with uh, really anybody, any clients, mm-hmm. whoever say that like, I can't. Oh, I can't do that. It's like, well, let's let's start to shape the the way we're looking at that. Right? Yeah, because like, if you say you can't, you right can't now, do it, like, then you won't. Exactly. Like and if like, you say you can, then that you know, then you, you will, like, mm-hmm. if you, if you really want to do it, then you will. Exactly. And, it's like, and there's other ways to get there. Like a perfect example for me in my space, right? A mm-hmm. uh, client has a fused ankle, right? And they're like, Oh, I, I can't squat. You know, it's like, Oh, why not? Like, we just have to find the best way for you to squat. Right? Yeah. It's like, let's elevate that heel. Let's get you to squat now. Now that yeah, person's exactly. squatting, it's like, see, you can squat. It's just, you can't, yeah. you couldn't do it right then and there. Cause you just didn't know which path to take and there's there's other routes to get places than just that one thing right Mm so i think that's a very very interesting way of looking at things i think it's very uh very growth minded for sure it has to be you know what i'm saying like if you if you weren't growth minded i don't think you you i don't think you'd think that way because it's just like wouldn't be a second thought and just be like okay well i can't do that i'm not gonna do it yeah like that would have been the end of whatever I wanted to do. Exactly. Like, I wouldn't have done as much as I have. Yep. I'm not, I just, I, like I said earlier, I've always been like a big dreamer mm-hmm. and I always dream big. You already know. And I always got to like follow my dreams no matter what and yeah. achieve my goals. I whatever it may be. You're doing it too though. That's the thing. Like you know? 
you're, you're really doing it. And like, I mean, look where you started. Like, we're all coming together. We're all doing yep. this thing. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm just happy that, you know, we were able to get you on the episode. Like, thank you for, you know, spending yeah. your time coming over, being no the problem. first in-person guest and, you know, partnering with XSF and allowing yeah. us to, you know, uh, bring this vision of just healthy, good skaters, you know, like, yeah. let's just be healthy all around, whatever it's mental, physical, and just skate for the rest of our life. So yeah, I want to say thank you for XSF, from XSF uh, to, you know, partnering up with us and bringing us on. Cause I know we are more than excited and honored to be here with you guys. And it's a lot. It's I know fun. it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a ride. It's going to be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun time. It's going to be the best. So before, before we end it today, I want to know, so whenever the three skaters mm-hmm. you would, uh, you would have at the park, now, if you could have three companies be a part of your distro, okay, who would they be? Just random, just you know. I know, I know. The distro is to be with the homies and build together. But like, if you just pick, just cherry pick, just a couple companies, three companies, who who do you think you would choose? Oh, um, honestly, I would probably go with. I would probably have to go with. Hmm. These are from completely different distributions, by the way. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be the same. Yeah, all okay. over the place. Go for it. Okay, so I would probably have to go with um, Real. Mm-hmm. I would probably have to go with um, Enjoy because I like their graphics a lot. Ah, yep. And their team's chill, too. Yeah. They seem they're like they'd like just really be like a chill. Team. Yeah, like a chill team to skate with. Like, they're not too like stressed about it. Yeah, facts. And, like, I, I like watching a lot of Louis Barletta parts. Oh, yeah. And he, yeah. like... He makes me laugh. Like, I like <laughs> yeah. watch him skate. Like, yeah, I'll just be like, wow, this guy seems really fun. Yeah. And then I would have to say, probably skate mental. Yeah. Because Brad Stabo, ah, he's like, his grab sick. him and his graphics that he creates. I, I was the just going to say, so it's, yeah, skate, their skate mental's graphics are hands down some of the best. Like, they, like it's awesome. Great. <laughs> it's awesome. And I'm, I've been trying to like figure out, okay, his graphics are so detailed and amazing. Mm-hmm. How can I. Like do something like that with Dream Big. Like how yeah. talk to him, reach out to him. I'm I for sure will because I need to figure out like what his process is. Mm-hmm. So like those three companies for sure. Okay, have to okay. Go. that's sick, dude. That's awesome. Well, you know, before you leave, make sure everybody knows where can they where can they find you? Mm-hmm. Where can they find Dream Big and 10K? Uh, also, mm-hmm. I'll have everything in the show notes. So. If you miss what he says, don't worry. You can go right down the show notes. I'll have everything for you to click on. But let him know. Let him know what's up. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so you can find me on Instagram at hill underscore mom. And uh, you can find 10K at 10K Distribution on Instagram. All one word. All one. Uh, and then uh, Dream Big would be at Dream Big Skate on Instagram. And that's where you can find us. And if you if you don't know where any of the 10K brands are, will be um, showcased, they're all in the 10K Instagram bio, and all the websites are under the 10K link tree. So you can reach us all there. All our YouTube channels are there too. So go check it out. It's going to be great. Yes, it will. Yeah, we'll have the, uh, I'll make sure I get that link tree then in the, in the show notes okay. too. Yeah, for sure. And if you need, I can send it to you. All right. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That'd be perfect. All right. Well, uh, like I always like to say, just know that everybody is capable of being extreme.